Hello, warriors. Welcome to the You Movement. I am B. And I'm going to be 100% honest and say I'm not entirely sure whether this video is going to make it onto YouTube or not. So if it does, um, uh, that'll be interesting. And if it doesn't, well, you'll you'll never know. <laughs> so. Um, Today, uh, I wanted to do a little bit of a video chat in regards to a retrospective look at awakening, my awakening in particular. In so doing, uh, maybe assist a few of you out there that are going through your own awakening process and being put through uh, quite a, a journey. I don't like the term journey, it makes it sound pleasant. It certainly has been beyond belief and more difficult than I could have ever anticipated. When I was younger, I've been on a spiritual quest, a spiritual journey, I suppose, since I was uh, quite young in my 20s, early 20s, I started looking for answers uh, to the question of why do people suffer? Because of my own childhood and the way that I was raised, uh, it was uh, of paramount interest of me to determine the root cause of suffering so that not only could I potentially help others with their suffering, but I could help myself with mine. Those that have been following me know that my childhood was fraught with a lot of trauma. I spent my life looking for ways uh, out out of pain, uh, out, out of suffering. Uh, and those ways brought me all the regular routes that most people go down, you know, the regular psychological, uh, medical, uh, pharmacological, all the regular paths, as well as down all the spiritual paths uh, of really diving deep into Buddhism, into energy work, understanding Reiki and understanding uh, different spiritual philosophies and uh, this quest that I've been on uh, pretty much my whole life. I had read often uh, about people who had gone through spiritual awakenings and I, I always admired them and they, I suppose, were my superheroes. People like Mother Teresa and uh, Gandhi and uh, Jesus, uh, Mohammed, Buddha, all of these figures in my life. Uh, my cat Arwen in the background is joining us today. Uh, all of these figures in my life were, were my superheroes uh, as well of uh, of course, uh, some fictional ones like Frodo from Lord of the Rings, uh, you know, the unsuspecting uh, person that falls into a quest or a journey without any awareness or understanding of what befalls them. So sometimes uh, fiction uh, is as profound a teacher as is uh, some of the nonfiction guides that we have been given in life. I never would have thought that I uh, would have been worthy enough uh, to be going down any spiritual awakening path myself. I thought that was reserved for the best of the best out there. And uh, I, I was a far cry from measuring up to uh, any, you know, semblance of, you know, St. Joan of Arc or anything like that. I, I, although I admired her greatly, I certainly wouldn't have put myself into the same uh, category a lot of uh, self-worth issues, of course, are, are at the root cause of a lot of our suffering. And when we are raised in an environment with a lot of trauma, and uh, particularly in my case, by both the, the situation of being abandoned through uh, uh, the adoption process, which is like telling somebody, you're not good enough, I'm giving you away. Uh, to uh, being raised by a narcissistic parent that routinely uh, told me that I wasn't good enough. <laughs> the uh, harsh criticisms and, and um, the, the indoctrination, the brain, brainwashing, the programming uh, that I received uh, certainly wouldn't have uh, set me up to have any semblance of belief that I would ever go through an awakening. When my awakening began uh, is 
is it's hard really for me to pinpoint uh because i kind of think that if you've been predestined to be uh on the awakening path that kind of starts from day one uh in your life and you know dark night of the soul could have been describing my childhood it could have been describing my youth it could have been describing my, many of my adult years uh, it certainly could have been describing uh, my life through my 40s uh, when I really lost faith. Um, I had come back uh, to Canada from living in Ireland abroad for 10 years. I had so much hope uh, when I had returned to Canada in 2009 and I was going to set up my business as a Reiki master. I was full of life. I was full of passion. I was full of um, hope and belief. And uh, that quickly, quickly started disintegrating um, almost as soon as, as I arrived. Uh, but I am a very, or used to be described as a, an exceptionally strong person, and I, I plugged through and persevered and uh, was going to trudge forward and, you know, I'm going to make this work and I'm going to do what I need to do and I'm going to accomplish what I need to accomplish and I can, I can do it. And uh, the fact is that um, when I had come back I, uh, to Canada, I'd come back because um, I'd set up uh, with, uh, in a new relationship uh, and I, I was um, hopeful that, you know, this this is going to be the one, this, this is going to be the relationship that um, finally makes me feel at home and finally makes me have that, that partnership and finally, you know, I've manifested this, I, I've prayed on this, I've done the work, I, I've, yes, this, this is my, this is my opportunity. Uh, within six months uh, of being here, uh, the relationship uh, started showing um, some serious signs uh, of some problems. Um, but I, I didn't I didn't recognize them as uh, red flags. Uh, I'm going to be honest with you. Uh, the the pre moving in together, we were in a long distance relationship for uh, a very long time. Anyways, about 10 months long distance relationship, uh, talking all the time uh, on Skype. And uh, he was exceptionally attentive and he would persevere. It was it was a constant uh, energy of uh, of being um, love bombed is the term. Of course, I didn't know that term then. Um, but I, I would have been continually love bombed for a, a long period of time, and uh, I, I fell eventually uh, hook, line, and sinker. And so when I moved back to Canada and uh, we began to blend our, our families, um, and things started to go wrong almost right away. Um, I, I couldn't understand it uh, and I was like well I'm just gonna have to fix this and I'm just gonna have to fix that and I just started working harder uh, and pushing myself more and in, in more into um, problem solving and uh, more and more in, into um, trying to, to save save the day save the situation because there was always um, one crisis after another crisis after another crisis and uh it, it, it was a constant stress uh that was going on um for years uh and uh because i had been on my own for such a long period of time before that as a single mom i i, I I wanted so desperately to believe uh, that I could, you know, make make this work, and I tried. I just kept trying uh, harder and harder. And um, uh, when you're deeply enmeshed uh, in something that you keep trying to fix, uh, you you can't always uh, necessarily see what the problem is. So, uh, for a period of time. Um, 
Uh, I, I was uh, working multiple jobs and trying to get my own business as a Reiki master off the ground and uh, trying to s juggle all these uh, constant crises and, and constant situations that were um, o overwhelming. And uh, eventually what happened is I, I burnt out. And uh, it was right around the time that um, uh, my father got ill and uh, I burnt to a crisp. I, I, um, I, I was bedridden uh, for a period of time. Uh, at that point, I waved the flag and put myself back on antidepressants. Uh, the weight was steadily accumulating. My health was uh, in a steady decline. I closed up shop as a, a Reiki master, which was my life dream, um, because I lost faith. And uh, I couldn't help others uh, when I needed to help myself. I, I always knew the um, the expression, you know, heal or heal thyself. And so uh, I, I started looking uh, at, at things the best I could uh, with the information that I had at the time. And, um, you know, I... I suggested we try counseling and I suggested we uh, I, I I do my own counseling and maybe we can solve this and maybe we can solve that and I went you know real deep uh, into a deep dive into trying to understand the dynamics that were at play and um, um, e even to the best of my ability and calling in extra help um, I, I still didn't see, I, I still didn't see what was at play, even though at that point, um, I, I think that had already been about, you know, we'd be about five years in and I already started asking uh, for a separation. Uh, and uh, the problem was he just, he just wouldn't leave. He, he just wouldn't leave. A any time that I, I would ask for, um, to end the relationship, um, uh, there would be what is called, uh, you know, uh, future faking and I'm going to try harder and false promises and, and, um, you know, for a bit of time there would be intermittent, uh, positive reinforcement and, and uh, I, I could relax again and I felt like, okay, there's hope again and this and that. And so then these cycles, uh, of, uh, raging and uh, and uh, negative uh, situations, crisis, reactionary abuse, uh, financial abuse for sure. Um, uh, and it was like living with Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde, and uh, it, it was um, it, it was like being in a boxing ring, and, and even though there was no physical um, abuse, emotionally or mentally or psychologically, it, it was like being in a boxing ring where um, energetically I was routinely getting punched in the head, and it, it would just keep me in a state of being um, dizzy, confused. Um, and on top of that, my health it was still steadily declining. The weight was constantly growing. The pharmaceuticals were numbing. Um, uh, my my capacity, my brain uh, capacity was in a state of decline. Uh, I was uh, starting to lose um, memory. Sorry, I'm getting eaten by mosquitoes out here. Uh, uh, lose uh, memory. I failed an Alzheimer's test. Um, uh, I was going every which way for, for help that I could. Uh, I started doing cognitive behavioral therapy. I, I started doing uh, dialectic behavioral therapy. I went for psychological evaluations, you know, because I thought the problem was me. It must be me. I'm the one that's having the symptoms. Uh, so uh, the problem must be me. And uh, when they tried to diagnose me with agoraphobia, I, I was like, I hey, know yeah, that doesn't fit. Uh, that doesn't fit at all. Um, that something's something's not right there. And um, so that brings us to about um, I'm going to say five six years ago. And um, 
meanwhile, the cycles uh, that I was in were continual and, and uh, the cycles of uh, stress. And then uh, he'd fly in and be like the savior. And so, you know, you stress somebody out enough and then they burn out and then you come in and you're like, here, let me do something nice for you. And then you're like, oh, thanks, that feels so good. And then it would be stress again. And oh, here, let me do something nice for you. And then you'd be like, oh, thanks. So it'd be like a constant, um, mind fuckery uh, that was at play uh, to the point where I was just uh, dizzy. I, I was just absolutely dizzy and, and, and confused. And uh, 2018, 2019 is in and around when things were at their absolute worst. And uh, I started uh, accumulating diagnoses like they were, uh, you know, collector cards uh, from the doctor oh here this week I'm giving you diabetes this week I'm giving you fibromyalgia this week I'm giving you uh, uh, a failed Alzheimer's test this week I'm giving you sleep apnea this week I'm giving you, you know, like I mean it was ridiculous it, in, in retrospect it, it was absolutely insanity and uh, of course, you know, when you're the one having all the symptoms, you, you don't see the interconnectedness of um, what, what's happening around you. You, you, you just don't. I, I, you know, people, people might say, and they have said uh, to me, you know, well, why don't you just get out? Uh, I, I tried uh, to get out uh, of my marriage probably 10 times. Uh, uh, at least five counselors I, I went to in the desperate desperation uh, to to for them to say you, you you this is abusive you need to get out or say something uh, but always um, you know uh, he he was remarkable at uh, looking like um, just a super suave guy a super jovial fun good guy uh, in front of other people. Uh, of course, uh, others didn't see what I saw or more specifically what my son unfortunately uh, saw in regards to the raging and uh, the passive aggression and uh, the controlling uh, behaviors. So um, uh, sometime in and around uh, 2019 December, um, I, I got very ill. Something happened inside of me. My oxygen levels dropped uh, to 82%, which is exceptionally low. Uh, I have that uh, number because uh, I was undergoing sleep apnea testing at the time uh, when a lot of this was going down. So they have that number recorded and they're like, your oxygens are supposed to be well above like 98 uh, and you're at 82%, that's, uh, so I, I, I don't know if, if I, I thought I was going to die. Uh, something in me felt like I was dying. And, and I even asked the question, you know, I, I, am, I, am I dying? And uh, something woke up in me and, and they say that um, awakenings can be brought upon by extreme uh, crisis, extreme uh, situations, near death experiences and um, uh, other uh, shocking uh, life events. And, and so Something woke up in me and screamed at me uh, and I heard soul very clearly for the first time in years because I had been so disconnected um, prior to that for about four or five years in this dark place of uh, despondency, depression, um, isolation. Uh, I spent most of my time in bed and uh, this voice screamed at me to save myself. And I knew it was referring uh, to getting out uh, of this marriage, but I, I didn't know how. And, uh, you know, I looked at myself, uh, a real hard uh, look, and I looked at uh, my surroundings and I, I, I had no idea how I was going to do that because uh, my life was uh, so utterly fucked up. Uh, 
my health was in such a state of decline that uh, I didn't know I didn't know how to how to do that. And so I, I sat uh, in meditation in my own room uh, for a couple of days and did started doing some really deep dive research uh, into brain chemistry because um, I knew with the depression that that was my first uh, hurdle that I needed to get over because despondency had me doing nothing. Um, I, I was like, this is my life until I die. This, this is this is the way it's gonna be. I'm I'm just gonna I'm just gonna suffer until I die. And uh, I knew I couldn't I couldn't uh, I couldn't do that. So um, I, I started researching brain chemistry hacks and other ways to get the dopamine levels high and uh, oxytocin levels high. And so I came up with the Able program for myself and uh, there's a playlist for that if you want to understand a little bit more about the ABLE program. Uh, but it, it's what uh, gave me the, the fundamentals and the tools to work with to get me out of this thing that I was trapped in, this uh, state of mental, emotional, spiritual hell. So uh, I knew the next thing that was the priority was uh, obviously my health, diabetes taking the forefront of uh, all my issues because um, I could barely do anything. Um, uh, you, if you've ever had diabetes, uh, you know, the first symptom uh, of uh, diabetes is um, a need to go to the bathroom like all the time. So. Um, getting to the bathroom was, was it, it was like I was an 80 year old woman who was incontinent. So even going for any length of a walk w was tricky. Uh, I'd always have to like manage to make sure that I'd get home in time to go to the bathroom. And um, you know, that was embarrassing, humiliating, um, uncomfortable. And uh, as well as that, as I had peripheral neuralgia down my left leg, and um, uh, was developing all these other symptoms uh, as well as this pain in, in my face started in and around uh, the same time as, and uh, it became, uh, I started channeling uh, the energies of like Rocky Balboa. I grew up watching that, you know, I'm a child of the seventies uh, and just thinking, you know, you got to train, you got to train, you got to train. And every single day was like, you got to train. And um, I had lost my job. Uh, and uh, so my job became my health. My job became everything in me because I knew I'd never be able to escape uh, from the hell that I was living in. Um, as long as I was... Uh, vastly overweight and unable to do anything uh, so training uh, myself became um, n not something I wanted to do it became something that I was uh, motivated to do because it was a life or death it was evolve or die so um, uh, that year, that first year, 2020, uh, and uh, part of 2021, um, uh, I, I was impassioned about my my weight loss, impassioned about you know eating right, uh, impassioned about, and I was making great leaps and bounds, uh, not only on the physical, on the mental, and the emotional. I was quitting things left, right, and center. I quit alcohol. I quit. Um, I quit sugar, I quit uh, high carbs, I quit caffeine, I quit pharmaceuticals, I quit uh, all of these things that were keeping me um, tethered uh, and numb uh, in this situation um, that I, I couldn't get out of. I, I, I tried, I really tried. 
And um, I started noticing um, at that stage that um, despite all my best efforts uh, in, in my relationship, um, he, there was a, a, a subtle undermining uh, going on uh, and um, Uh, somebody said to me once, uh, you know, have you ever considered uh, the fact that maybe they don't want you well? And uh, I hadn't uh, considered that. Uh, that had never been something that had crossed my mind. Uh, but then once that seed uh, was in there, I became hyper uh, vigilant and observant into um, the behaviors. And yes, um, you know, um, when somebody is trying to lose weight, bringing them home donuts is not helping. Um, when somebody is trying to um, uh, get their wits about them, bringing home wine is not uh, helping. Um, it was them that had suggested that, you know, I try, I try pot and would routinely bring home, uh, pot, uh, for me to, to help, you know, uh, but was it, was it helping, uh, I, in retrospect, I don't think so. So, uh, as I said, this, this cycle of, um, create the problem and then look like the savior of the problem, um, is this covert cycle uh, of insanity that um, uh, I was deeply uh, enmeshed. I, I had never heard of the term trauma bond before. Um, I always thought that uh, as a healer that I was uh, had shown up in this relationship with honor and integrity and was you know, going to help to the, my best of my ability and I could heal him and um, I could fix the situation. And it was me that identified the fact that he had ADD and, oh, see, maybe that's what the problem is. Uh, you know, you've got attention deficit disorder and that's why nothing gets done and that's why nothing gets better. And that's why, you know, Uh, but I think that uh, even gave him just an excuse uh, to, to continue all kinds of um, very manipulative uh, types of behaviors that, that I didn't recognize uh, at the time. So um, in 2021, uh, I met who I believe is my twin flame or not. I, I, I don't, at this stage of the game, um, I, I don't know what I really believe about um, uh, twin flames. Uh, all I know is, is I met an individual um, that uh, triggered something in me. Um, and I had already crossed paths with this individual a, a couple of times before this, but um, uh, our relationship was strictly professional and um, something happened uh, is all I can say. And um, it, it was like uh, nothing I'd ever experienced in my life. And uh, I had what's known as, uh, or described in the Twin Flame community as a heart activation or heart expansion uh, wherein, you know, the stuff that stories are, are written about happened. And uh, I felt a, a kind of love that I, I'd never uh, experienced before. Uh, I also uh, had um, a, a Kundalini activation, uh, so a spontaneous Kundalini. Um, uh, I had been uh, texting this individual and um, I was sitting on the floor doing uh, some art and all of a sudden I could feel this uh, energy uh, coming through me and uh, like from the root chakra all the way up into my crown and out it was the most um, uh, intense experience of my life like I, I i can't it was very sensual uh, very um yeah it, it was 
you have to understand that I, I'm, I'm not the type of person uh, who who's very flirtatious uh, by nature. Uh, I, I would have been in my 20s, you know, when there was a lot of drink involved, but um, to me, I, uh, loyalty within my marriage was very important to me. And uh, so to have these feelings uh, seemed very uh, out of place, out of character, um, uh, overwhelming, confusing. Um, and um, after this uh, insane uh, energetic flooding of uh, energy that flew through me about three times, uh, I, I then in a couple hours was bawling my eyes out crying. Like it, it was illogical to the point of like my own egoic mind couldn't comprehend uh, what was happening at all and it, it felt like my entire reality shifted um, dramatically uh, and this uh, love that I felt for this person um, uh, was over overwhelming uh, beyond belief and uh, I've done other videos uh, on the experience before but um, uh, I owe this person so much gratitude, um, e even though, you know, we, we went our separate ways, there, there was no, there was no place for, um, there to be any kind of relationship or friendship. Both were, uh, deeply involved in, in other, um, relationships, long, long, long-standing, long-term relationships. So it would have been uh, inappropriate uh, for us to um, continue uh, communicating on any level. So we, we haven't communicated in years, uh, but the feeling uh, never stopped. Uh, the, 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 that feeling in my heart space uh, just was overwhelming which of course sent me down uh, the rabbit hole of trying to understand what was happening to me where I came across again the term twin flame I, I had known of it in in you know my consciousness I had known somewhere in my years of being a Reiki master I had read about this uh, phenomenon and it had never struck a chord with me before uh, until this experience and uh, so I went and dug down that rabbit hole of trying to figure out what, what the heck was happening to me. And um, uh, I, I realized, okay, this, this is very Twin Flame-ish in, in the, the descriptions uh, of everything that's happening. And um, uh, I talk now about uh, how much gratitude I have for this basically stranger <laughs> uh, because uh, the love that I felt that that was unleashed inside of me uh, back in 2021 um, was what was missing. It was the fuel uh, that was missing to help me fully escape uh, from this uh, relationship that I was in. And so uh, within a couple of months, uh, I asked for a divorce uh because uh you know trying to follow my ethical uh footing uh i i you know i said uh to my husband at the time if i'm in love with somebody else regardless of the fact that you know we can't be together it just verifies the fact that i'm not in love with you uh so um i need this to end and I wouldn't have been able to do that, see? I, I wouldn't have been able to have the courage uh, to ask, even though I had asked, I had asked uh, for uh, separation, as I said, probably close to 10 times in the previous uh, 13 years uh, before that. Uh, this time I had conviction that I never had before. And uh, I, I was absolute that uh, I, I wanted a, a divorce. And so on December 15th, 2021, I, I asked for a divorce. And uh, yet again, uh, he, he wouldn't leave. He, he just wouldn't leave. And uh, 
my uh, awakening after my kundalini had uh, activated me was extreme uh, on a daily level. I was going through, I had already gone through so much change and transformation on the physical. Uh, now I was processing things on the emotional level that I couldn't even comprehend. Like, I mean, I was crying daily, like, it, it was crazy. And as I was having these uh, releases, these purges, these uh, these triggered moments, you know, memories would be flooding my system of uh, all through my childhood as early on as uh, being in the womb, as early on as being an infant, as early on as, you know, all through my childhood and the grief. Uh, that was being expressed that had never been expressed before was coming out and and so um, my husband uh, you know was observing and, and witnessing these extreme changes that I was going through not only on the physical not only on the habits not only on the the way I was showing up in the world but also in these like purges uh, and everything that I was processing and uh, it was around that time that uh, I changed my name uh, to B because uh, it started off as just like, this is my plan B. And uh, that person that I once was, I just am no longer because I was going through all these constant cycles uh, of uh, ego death and uh, soul retrieval and inner child work and shadow work and every single day it was extreme and uh, the PTSD that I was experiencing while I was going through this was extreme because uh, not only had I also uh, lost my job, I lost my best friend, uh, I lost contact with my mother uh, who I ended up cutting off uh, after I had asked for the divorce uh, because her response to me was so uh, insane uh, that I, I, I couldn't, I was in such severe PTSD, I couldn't communicate with her anymore. Uh, she had said to me that um, asking for a divorce was the stupidest thing I could have ever done because uh, nobody else will ever love me. Uh, I'm an exceptionally dis difficult person to love. I am incapable of uh, doing anything. And, and and I hung up the phone. So she had prepared a laundry list of, of things and um, it, it felt like she had just dropped a, a bomb on my head uh, like a self-destruct sequence and uh, I, I was so the PTSD uh, symptoms started for me uh, in early 2022 uh, and I, I was just pressing on as best I could uh, every single day dealing with uh, what had become a dark night of the soul uh, a true uh, dark night of the soul, a spiritual crisis uh, of sorts on, on a low, constant ebb that was uh, manageable at, at the time. Uh, the summer of 2022, um, I... Um, I sought treatment uh, through traditional uh, shamanic medicines uh, to help me deal with some of these uh, post-traumatic stress disorder symptoms. And uh, funnily enough, uh, she said to me, now don't make any major life decisions in the next three weeks. Oops. Uh, three days later after doing this uh, treatment, uh, I, I finally had uh, the balls or the energy and I don't even know where it came from uh, to kick my husband out of the house um, and uh, for me to be able to do that you have to understand uh, this is a man that refused to leave that just wouldn't leave when you say you want a divorce you know most normal people go okay well I'm gonna pack up and I, I'm gonna move here and I'm gonna get this situation and, and no Th this was I'm not going anywhere so sure we can be separated but uh, I'm here and I'm not leaving and uh, I after this um, treatment 
uh, was like, you need to get out, you need to get out now. And uh, he was gone within a week. And uh, like he was gone that night and came back that, that weekend uh, to collect all his stuff. And um, that triggered uh, and set me off on my first um, spiritual crisis, a spiritual emergency. And I've done a few videos talking about spiritual emergencies before. Now, if you think you're having a spiritual emergency, please read the book, um, uh, The Stormy Search for Self uh, by uh, Stanislav Groff and his wife, Stephanie Groff, I believe. The Groffs. Uh, because uh, it, it uh, is one of the most scary experiences that you can uh, fathom uh, when you go into spiritual emergency. And it is, uh, as they describe, often triggered by a major crises uh, in your life. Uh, it can be job loss, it can be the breakdown of a relationship, it can be... Uh, so for me, it was uh, finally the breaking uh, of this trauma bond and physically um, uh, being separated from him. And um, I had no clue uh, what was happening. I was not well versed or uh, experienced enough in the world of spiritual awakenings. Um, you know, I was still just wrapping my head around the fact that I'm on some sort of twin flame awakening and what does that even mean? And why am I crying over a stranger every day? And why am I crying over this childhood memory that, you know, happened 40 years ago? And, you know, why am I like jittery and, uh, why is all these other weird things happening? So when uh, that uh, initial break of a trauma bond and, um, you know, if, if you look at it from the spiritual side of it, you would call it like a karmic relationship. Uh, if you were looking at it from a more psychological point of view, you'd call it a trauma bond. Uh, either way, um, it, it's by far the worst uh, experience of my life. So, um, uh, that, uh, sent me, um, into, uh, a, a, an absolute, um, near psychosis state of, um, I mean, it was dark. It, it was a dark time for me and, um, it, it um, uh, I, 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 I reached out, uh, I reached out to my, um, uh, doctor's office, uh, requesting some pharmaceuticals, uh, because in the past when I'd had, um, uh, you know, real dark depression and, and uh, feeling of, uh, this is all too much. Uh, I, I had in the past used lorazepam as a means to assist me, uh, through that process. And so, uh, I guess I was, uh, rather irrational on the phone and they called, uh, for, uh, a, a, a wellness check for me. And uh, I, I was not in a good place. And when they asked me if I was at risk to harming myself, I said that I certainly didn't want to be here anymore. And uh, that was a mistake. Uh, and they took me to um, the hospital for observation for three days against my will. So, um, it took me a while after that to restabilize uh, for in any semblance of uh, what is happening, and uh, you know I I was reaching out and trying that summer a, a lot of um, uh, medicinal treatments, uh, shamanic treatments uh, to help assist me with this transitory phase, the, the, the PTSD that I was experiencing. And uh, that, that autumn, uh, my mother died. So uh, I was yet again propelled into uh, another trauma, uh, a, a shocking experience, which um, my, uh, separated husband, uh, cause we were just still in a state of separation used, uh, very quite calculated, uh, to, to make inroads again. 
and uh, you know tried uh, very hard to be my my best friend and be there for me and support me and um, all of a lot of love bombing again uh, a lot of hoovering is the term if you don't know this uh, term please uh, look it up and um, because I was so destabilized uh, with my own awakening process and um, with these shocks that just kept coming one after another after another, uh, I, I was easy for the taking. And then um, uh, the legal situation with her will began, uh, which further exacerbated my dark night of the soul and uh, further gave him inroads uh to um to make moves uh towards uh reconciliation is uh what he wanted uh and kept saying and uh and on top of that uh while you're in um a spiritual crisis and uh in dark night of the soul uh, all my spiritual gifts were coming online and I didn't know what half of them meant or what uh, was happening. You know, when you start having telepathic communication, uh, it's not like the movies where all of a sudden you're hearing something and it's like a conversation. You'll get like little snippets and you'll be like, did that really happen? Especially when you have a long history of being gaslit. You don't understand. Uh, you're, you're getting two different messages you're getting these spiritual messages and then you're you're getting what they're saying to your face and and it's uh, all kinds of wackadoodle uh it, and the same with clear audience uh of like hearing things uh, as well on, on the spiritual realm as well as uh um get the clear audience uh clairvoyance uh, of seeing pictures of things and not being able to make sense and put them together so uh, I, I was in a very fragile state and um, um, I, I, he decided uh, that this was a, a, a good time or um, I, I still don't understand to this day I don't understand because uh, you know uh, he could have gone his separate way and I would have never been the wiser and everything would have been fine um but in instead um he decided uh last march uh to confess to me everything and when i mean everything i i mean everything uh uh all of a sudden you know um I, i'm being told that he never loved me um uh, he wanted to come clean because he wanted to start things fresh with the, this reconciliation and, and so he was going to purge his soul of sins and in so doing um, you know he admitted that he had been in love with another woman our entire relationship but she was unavailable so uh, he I guess figured that I was the backup plan I, I don't know I don't understand that one uh, he admitted to gaslighting me pretty much the entire marriage. He admitted to the reactionary abuse of creating uh, situations uh, wherein I would react uh, so that I would look like the crazy person in front of his friends, thus making me less wanting to spend time with his friends because I was embarrassed so that he could go and come as he pleased uh, without me interfering uh, with his social life. Um, uh, especially because the woman that he was in love with uh, was, uh, you know, in this social circle. Um, so although I had never met her directly, I had met relations of hers. And so he needed to cut the any connection I had with these people so that um, so that our paths wouldn't cross, you know, and uh, the financial abuse, uh, as well as, you know, the triangulation of me with different family members, I was completely isolated from all of his social circle. Uh, and um, uh, as well as that, he admitted to, you know, the raging and, uh, you know, that he had been um, a really shitty stepfather uh, to my son, who was always jealous of my son and my son's relationship with me. And then uh, he went on to admit uh, uh, some criminal activity. 
and um, my brain broke. Uh, my brain broke. My 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 brain. Uh, my brain broke. I I went into such severe. Um, uh, I, 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 I didn't, I couldn't understand reality. I, I completely lost touch of reality uh, at, at that point in time and um, uh, became completely disassociated uh, from the things that he had said to me because I, I couldn't. Uh, so I, I don't know if this was some uh, sadistic means for, um, to try to control the situation to get back in. I, I don't know if this was his way of trying to relieve him, himself of uh, his own guilt uh, and, and thinking that that would uh, atone for his sins. I, 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 I don't know. I, to this day, I still don't know. Uh, but it propelled me into a very deep, uh, very dark, uh, dark night of the soul for a very uh, long period of time. Uh, if it hadn't have been uh, for a friend of mine who um, saw me through that, uh, I, I don't think I would have made it. Um, and uh, her uh, influence in my life and coming into my life was an element that he had never um, calculated into into his um into his playbook uh, uh because uh she she held she held me together uh and uh saw me through um but because i had become so disassociated uh uh in this dark night um uh, it uh, it almost worked to his advantage because he was like, "See, now I'm here for you. I'm I'm gonna like see you through." And, and I was so desperate uh, that I again fell hook, line, and sinker. It makes zero sense uh, to me in retrospect now, but um, shock does crazy things uh, to your brain, uh, especially when you're going through a very intense kundalini awakening and um, you, you're not making much sense of, of what's happening and you're you're trying to deal with one thing as it comes and so for a period of about six months um, uh, uh, he was ever present uh, bes beside me in my life um, as a friend uh, who's there to support me through what I'm going through and I never pieced the puzzle pieces together that what I was going through had been triggered uh, by his confessions. But I see it now. And um, come September, um, I, I caught him in another lie and uh, I went no contact, uh, which triggered uh, yet again uh, another really plummeting, uh, deep uh, spiritual crisis. Uh, and again, it connects to that whole concept of trauma bondedness. Uh, and listen, I've quit alcohol, I've quit pot, I've quit cigarettes, I've quit caffeine, I've quit sugar, and nothing, nothing. Uh, is uh, harder to quit uh, than the withdrawal, the physical withdrawal uh, that you go when you um, start, uh, when you go no contact from an abusive, uh, psychologically, emotionally, mentally uh, abusive uh, situation that has uh, fucked with your head uh, so severely for so long. Uh, nothing, there is nothing. Uh, that compares uh, to um, the, the the destabilization uh, of going no contact uh, with somebody that you have become uh, completely and utterly enmeshed with. So abuse is not as simple as uh, you know, somebody's treating you badly and then you're like, I don't like this, I'm out. No, abuse is, I'm going to treat you badly. No, I'm going to treat you good. I'm going to treat you badly. I'm going to treat you good. I'm going to treat you badly. I'm going to treat you good. Until the point where you're like dizzy. You're just so dizzy and confused and like, 
I don't understand what's happening. You are the person that I trust most in the world. And now you are the person that has done the worst of the worst to me. And it's, um, it's mentally, mentally the most, um, uh, and they've proven, you know, in my research now, they, they've proven that, uh, the, uh, it chemically fucks with your brain. Like it chemically, your amygdala, uh, gets swollen and, uh, your adrenals are constantly being pumped, uh, and milked is, is kind of like the way that I see it. And, uh, you know, you're, you're going from a state of, uh, you know, dopamine to like pain to like, I need relief to the, it's, um, it, it, it's, it's not anything any normal person can fathom in their mind. That's why you can't fathom it when somebody's doing it to you because uh, it, it's a, a level of uh, sadistic um, that, that you, normal people uh, don't uh, have any type whatsoever. Sorry, my cat. Of, uh, of comprehension. It, it, it's 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 not uh, so if you're going uh, through withdrawal of a trauma bond you have the utmost uh, respect uh, so come January of this year I squeezed through a divorce faster than you can think is humanly possible I asked for absolutely nothing because I just wanted uh, it over and done with as fast as humanly possible and hired a firm uh, to process the paperwork and um, and I was terrified. I was absolutely terrified that uh, I would never be able to escape from this situation. So, um, so the fact that I have it, it, it has I've been white knuckling it since January, since signing these papers, terrified. Uh, that something was going to blow up and, you know, the courts were going to say, no, we're not granting this or whatever, you know, I don't know, aliens would come down and, and, and destroy the courthouse. I, I like, on, honestly, I, I, okay, maybe not aliens coming down, but, um, the, the point was, uh, I, I was just terrified that, um, something would happen to stop it, uh, from going ahead. So, um, in, in, February, um, uh, when I finally started getting my brain back together. So that took, that's taken me almost 11 months, uh, to, uh, get my brain, uh, back online. It, I, I still don't think it's fully functional to the extent that it should be by no means. Uh, but it took me 11 months to, uh, start piecing the puzzle pieces together in a way that started to make sense to me. And, uh, I, I finally contacted the police and, um, provided them with the, um, confession that I had received, which, uh, triggered, uh, yet again, uh, another round of, a uh, very intense, uh, spiritual, uh, emergency and, um, while you're in a spiritual emergency, it's hard to do anything. It's hard to get out of bed. It's uh, hard to feed yourself. It's hard to shower. It's hard to um, understand what's happening to you. It feels uh, spiritually like you're being attacked um, because uh, all of your fears are surfacing. I would experience violent, um, uh, expressions and shaking and, uh, releases of, uh, profound emotion and, um, the tears and the anguish and the emotions, uh, that would come through these phases of spiritual emergency were unnatural, uh, to me. Uh, I've talked a lot about this, uh, you know, through this awakening is you're forced to process all the emotions that you haven't wanted to process. And I'm telling you these emotions, uh, I, I will call myself out and say that, yes, I can understand why people want to spiritually bypass, uh, certain emotions because they were terrifying. And, um, uh, I've experienced a lot of terror uh, in the last year, uh, not just from this experience, but this experience has triggered and exacerbated the awakening, which has triggered and exacerbated, uh, the emotional releases. Uh, and I suppose one thing was needed to help 
the other uh, come to the surface. And, uh, you know, I, I, I joke and I jest about, you know, spiritual bypassing and is, is, is a hard no, but the reality is uh, to, do, to not spiritually bypass, to actually do the work, to do the shadow work, to do the releases, to do the purges is the most heroic uh, type of work that I can fathom any human doing on this planet uh, because uh, the stuff that surfaces while you're in uh, dark night of the soul or a spiritual crisis or spiritual emergency is it's beyond, beyond, beyond it's beyond. Uh, that's why it's described by so many spiritual leaders and spiritual um, gurus as going through hell. Uh, you know, uh, being tempted uh, by the devil, we that, that may be um, different, mean different things for different people. And depending on the culture that you're uh, raised with, uh, you know, being tempted by the darkness, your shadows, uh, it's inside of you. So what, what that is for you may not be the same of what it is for me. What it is for me was um, the most terrifying experiences of my life. So um, uh, my divorce was finally processed um, three days ago. Um, I thought I, I wanted I wanted to bypass to bliss yet again and hoped that uh, when um, when this I, I would feel free I would feel um, I, I would feel like celebrating uh, the opposite in fact uh, was true uh, more grief more grief that The last 15 years of my life was basically a lie. More, more grief that uh, the cruelty that exists within some people is beyond my capacity to fathom. I, I know that everything uh, comes from trauma, you know, trauma begets trauma and um, But the freedom of choice uh, supersedes that. The freedom of will is uh, the gift that God granted all of us. And, uh, you know, I, I could have uh, made the choice long ago and said, um, you know, I was adopted and I, I was abused. So now I'm going to be an asshole and I have a right. Uh, but I, I had freedom of will. And uh, my will chose to heal. My will uh, chose to show up in the world as, a, as loving and as kind and as compassionate a person as I could be. And that's the choice that everyone has. Everyone has that choice. And those uh, that choose uh, instead the easy path of uh, self-gratification and... Um, selfish pursuits of uh, wealth, power, control, manipulation, abuse, domination. Um, I, I don't think they know what they do. I, I don't think that they truly have um, the capacity of understanding uh, what it is that they do. Um, and if they do, uh, and, and, you know, one line s struck me and, and, and haunts me to this day, uh, which was the line, uh, he said, uh, I knew what I did was wrong, uh, but I did it anyways. But I, I don't, uh. I don't, I don't think they truly know exactly how wrong is wrong. You know, is, is wrong uh, a moral uh, or an ethical um, opinion? Uh, or is wrong um, 
on a spiritual level, uh, something far more profound than that. Um, I think that through this awakening process, uh, as the veil thins uh, between the feeling of separateness and you understand the interconnectedness of all, all people, um, wrong action um, becomes uh, something that uh, is ultimately going to come back and bite you on the ass. Um, so I, I don't, I, I feel sorry for these people. I, I feel sorry for these people, um, for, uh, and I'm going to quote Jesus here. They, they really, truly know not what they do. They, they truly don't, uh, have any comprehension of, uh, the pain and the suffering, uh, that they are, are causing not only to others uh, all around them, le leaving a trail of, uh, destruction in their wake, uh, but on a spiritual level, what they do to their own very soul. Um, and, and so I suppose, uh, today I'm going to end with a prayer of, uh, you know, may God have mercy on us all. Um, May God have mercy on those that have suffered uh, needlessly uh, by the hands of the ignorant uh, and the traumatized. And uh, may those that have done these acts of horrific uh, abuses uh to others uh whether that be on any level whatsoever uh spiritual physical mental emotional spiritual did i said that one uh sexual the these abuses um may may god ha have mercy so that you may find a, a road to um atonement, a, a road uh, to making right the wrongs. Um, simply stating that you've done wrong is, is not enough uh, to, to rectify uh, the, the lasting consequences uh, of behaving in, in inappropriate ways. Uh, so for those uh, that are out there that um, are carrying with them secrets, uh, whether it be things done to you or things you've done to others, the, the truth needs to come to light. Uh, the truth uh, and the actions uh, of wrongs need, need to be made right. You know, it is possible you, you hear uh, of people like gang members turning their lives around and um, becoming leaders uh, in helping assist other people's free themselves. Uh, you, you hear of people that were once uh, down in their luck who have struggled uh, with deep addictions turning around and, and becoming, you know, the, the sponsors of others to assist others. Um, uh, so it's through, it's through action, uh, that things can be righted. It's through actual action, uh, action steps are required. You, you can't just, um, absolve yourself of your sins, uh, by making them known. There needs to be an action of contrition, an action of rectification, an action uh, to make right. Um, and so that's my, my prayer today is um, for all of those out there that are in a state of suffering, um, may you be relieved of your suffering. 
and for all of those who have caused suffering, may you go and relieve others of their suffering. Um, that's my update today. And um, I'm sending my love to everyone uh, out there and um, 